I focused on during this development program was in your 625, which is marketing and competing strategies, competitive strategies, and it is one of the early specialty courses in the Master of Science in Nursing Management and Leadership program. Our students take 18 units of core courses, which every MSN specialty takes, and then they take 24 units of management and leadership specialty coursework. So that's where uh, this particular course rests. Uh, major changes for this offering. Um, for one thing, it, this has, the last two years has been offered as a 10-week summer course. And so I've modified it for it to be a full semester course, which is not huge. I decided for this run not to add more content per se, but to kind of focus on redistributing this to see how it works. And then I can make adjustments from there because this is the first time it's been taught as a full semester course. Um, in terms of my course setup, I've been teaching online for a little while, about 12 years. And so uh, I tend to set up my course menu sort of in the same order because my students, I have the same courses, same students, several courses in a row. So I think I could drive them really crazy if I decided to, to move things around in terms of location for every course. The only thing that's really different in terms of my menu setup that I learned about was the dividers. I had not seen that before. So I put two in. The first section is informational uh, uh, items in terms of where to start and major course documents, competencies, etc. cetera, uh, contact information and announcements, which I use a, it quite a lot. The second section are items that the student needs to do something with. So for example, the classmates section to post a bio, and I use the journal function for that where they can post a bio and a photo. Uh, the assignment section for submissions and guidelines, and then content, I use content folders by week and topic, and some of these are multiple week. Uh, discussions and then there's also a section where I will set up groups because there's a group scenario analysis presentation assignment so they'll need to use those. Um, the bottom section is just resources for distance ed and uh, a voice thread tutorial which I want to replace the one I have. I think you, you all have a newer one and the official Blackboard help site tools and grades. So that's the general menu of the course. Um, in terms of major changes that I have made, just looking at, so you kind of see what I have here. I do a video overview and everyone else, I haven't seen anybody else use Panopto, but that's what I tend to use because that's kind of how my brain works. So I do in my uh, start here section, there is a welcome and course overview, the syllabus, the calendar. The other documents that are in here, one of the things that um, is important to note is nursing is a highly regulated discipline. And so uh, what you would see if you look at our course objectives, which we'll look at in the content section in just a minute, uh, is that there are a lot of different uh, documents that have an influence on how we do things. So for example, if you look at my course objectives, you would see that uh, they are mapped to specific uh, American Organization of Nurse Executive Competencies. Uh, the uh, American Association of College of Nursing MSN Essentials and then Quality and Safety Education for Nurses Competency. So what you would see, I, I put these in here because each of the course objectives has specific items from these that are linked to them. So in, uh, in a spirit of transparency and making sure that if the students want to refer to any of these items, they have them available in every course along with a student handbook. Um, In terms of assignments and uh, the guidelines and submission links, one of the things I do is, uh, even though these are graduate students, it eliminates a lot of questions. In addition to giving them a written uh, guideline document for the assignment and grading criteria, I also do a short uh, Panopto video overview for each of these assignments. Uh, when I first started doing this, it, it probably cut my questions by more than 75%. So I've done that for each of the assignments. Uh, content folders, a couple of other things I want to point out here too. Um, what I do, what I have done is taken the course objectives and then identified where they go, what, what particular work weeks we're focusing on a particular course objective or a set of competencies. And so I've divided these out. Some, some uh, uh, topic sections have more than one week and that's part of the, if you will, the morphing from the 10 week to the 15 week situation. I may need to make adjustments in that later. 
um, each week I include uh, a short uh, Panopto video or audio overview because some of these are audio. And then I also include other key references for the students. And here I've got uh, citations from peer-reviewed literature, which I permalink. And then I've also got some additional uh, videos concerning strategic planning and some other documents as well. Uh, one of the things that Quality Matters mentions is proper citation of all materials. So you're going to note there's an APA citation for all of those, and the students can find it, know exactly where to locate it. Um, I'm not going to go all through all of those every section, but that kind of gives you a general idea of how it's laid out. Uh, we did assignments, discussions. I do, I, th I have actually had great success and you know, it's interesting to hear the commentary from everyone who's used discussion boards and how they can really suck badly and yes they can, depending on how it, they, you use them, but I've had really very good success with discussion, using discussion forums. Uh, I've got four in this particular course and mine are very structured um, because I don't want to see more, I want to see better. So essentially the students have a prescribed number, uh, they have to do an initial response, uh, two peer responses, and then also they have to respond to two sets of questions that I pose as well. And I do that basically with every discussion forum that we have. Um, the one thing I changed here that I wanted to point out is I wanted to do something different with one of the discussion items to try it. And so for the second one, what I'm going to be doing is in lieu of doing the written discussion format, we're going to use VoiceThread. And they have a scenario analysis presentation looking at, at uh, uh, healthcare insurance that there will be groups that will do this. And so what I'm going to have them do then is instead of uh, responding, if you will, in the written format is to actually use VoiceThread to provide comments. And when they do their post, they'll actually do the oral comment and then a written text comment right behind it to add the references that they're going to be required to have with that. So I, I thought I would try one I, just to see how this, to see how this works um, and to see potentially what kind of feedback I can get from the students in terms of what their thoughts are, are about this. Um, Trying to think of anything else I wanted to. Uh... I get a variety. Just I also get, um, in addition to master students, I've had several uh, DNP students that have taken this course, and uh, the feedback I've received from them is very, very positive because as they're looking at part of their the major thing that they have to do with their capstone project, they do have to do. A, a marketing plan. They're definitely doing strategy development and evaluation and those kinds of things. So they're, they're, they have found value in this course as well. So that's kind of the changes that I've made in the nutshell. They're not, uh, not a huge number, not a huge number. Um, and we'll kind of see how this, how this works. The one thing, rule of thumb I live by with technology is if I'm not comfortable fixing it, I typically don't use it, to be quite honest, uh, because that can be really problematic. We don't necessarily, to be quite honest, have consistent technical support on the campus where if a student contacts IT that they're even going to know what to do. That's the truth. And so I can troubleshoot everything that I, that I use here, whether the student is using a Mac or a PC makes no difference. I know it, for the most part, can walk them through whatever the problem is. And to be quite honest, I've not had, they, really the issues have been minimal. They've been minimal. Do you have any area you would like to get some feedback from your peers? Um, those of you who have used the voice thread in the four discussion items, what have you, have there been particular challenges or issues that you faced with trying to do this? I've used um, this past semester. For the, for the doctor, for the master students, I used where they had uh, um, one of the competencies that they have to do is strategy, as coaching, and so there are several uh, strategies that you can use to coach. Mm -hmm. So basically, the students had to utilize one of those coaching strategies, and then they had to do the the video was describing when they used it, why they chose that, what happened with it, mm -hmm. uh, and it went flawlessly. The students got to watch each other, so they actually got the strategy they used, but they got three other strategies, and they had to comment on everyone's presentation. Um, I, I thought it was really good. It was good, I thought, to get them to um, 
be able to focus because they gave like a 10 minute, I think it was 15 minute deadline. And if you didn't get the 15 minutes, you didn't get all your points because you got to be able to say it, get it done, and some of them direct on it. And so I thought that was, they learned a lot about being concise with their message. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't have any technological problems. Um, it worked fine. Did you use VoiceThread or Panopto? I used Panopto. Okay, I've not been bright. I've used Panopto for everything, you know, for the recordings that I do. But with the students, I'd use voice threads because I just wasn't sure how that other piece and, of know, it I worked. Voice threads a little bit easier to use. The reason I don't use voice threads is because I teach online continuing education, and it was a nightmare for those students. They are not considered students of USI, mm -hmm. and it was a nightmare. So going to Panopto solved all that problem for me. So okay. rather than learning two different systems, but I don't think voice threads is very hard at all to use, and I could use it for academic courses, but then I have to learn two different systems. <laughs> that seems a little overdone, redundant for me. Yes. Uh, there may have been a request we could maybe see a snippet of your uh, welcome video. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Where that might have been. Yeah, well, I'll show you just a snippet. <laughs> you get to see my messy shelves in my office. Greetings and good day and welcome to the course. I'm Dr. Hand, and I'd like to welcome you to NURS 625, which is Marketing and Competitive Strategies in Healthcare. This is a three credit hour graduate course uh, situated as part of the specialty courses within the Graduate Nursing Management Leadership Track. Um, <laughs> Just a little bit of me. <laughs> what Very the things little. I do for that is, is if I'm going to talk about the syllabus calendar, I put a little note saying, please print out calendar and syllabus before you watch the video. Mm -hmm. That way it's that already there, well. because yeah. that makes it, it makes it well. Um, I, I also um, give them pictures of what's important to me, yeah. and I, and the students will tell me I have four grandkids, and I'll show pictures of the grandkids. And that, they want to see that. It makes it me mm -hmm. see you for some reason. They also because mm -hmm. I, I tell them this is why I will not answer you on the weekend. <laughs> And I don't have that problem. They know it's going to be Monday. And, mm -hmm. and they tell me they really like the pictures and stuff. Because I teach three classes in a row for the graduate. And they can see the kids grow a little bit. So it's kind of personal, you know? Yeah. Rather than just seeing my mother, they get to see pictures of the kids. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I agree with that. <coughs> Doing that welcome video before has solved a lot of my problems. Mm -hmm. And I do one for the quality <laughs> improvement program project they do mm -hmm. in 606. It solved a lot of problems. And I give examples of what a QI problem for projects are that have been done in the past. That, it gave them some, some idea. Uh, one of the things I did for that um, last summer is I sent an email out about a week or two, probably about 10 days, two weeks before the summer class. It says, this is what you're going to have to do, so get your idea now uh, so that they're ready when school when class starts. Because they have to do a QI project is only 10 weeks, and there's a lot to do in 10 weeks. One thing I don't, I would mention too is when I do my weekly video clips, they're very short. They, I do snippets and key points to consider. I would sooner, as teaching graduate courses, I would sooner poke my eyes out with a pencil than lecture. And I also think it, it, it reinforces the, the wrong behavior that you want from, from graduate students. They need to be actively engaged in the journey. And, and I've had students ask, well, I want more detailed lectures. I want to do less discussion. Well, that's wonderful that you want that, but that's not what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to enable you to disengage from the content. So, I do have two um, scenario for um, voice thread. Uh -huh. um, there's a faculty member in the past create wonderful voice thread, but instead of using the link was in your back end, she just uh, go ahead to copy the link from the browser. And that address tend to be wrong. So that's one by which you're not going to have that issue. But that was just shared with everybody. And another mm. thing is a faculty create a wonderful set of videos and create group, but forgot to get students a group link to join. So right. nobody can see it. Right. So these are mm -hmm. two little. Because you know, I'll have to post the link for them to, to actually yes. post the presentation. For your course, it's not an issue, but yeah. since you asked, I want to share with them. You're right, and I've had yeah. the students do that too. And sometimes, in when and I've used VoiceThread for students to do presentations, that I've had to go in and do a little bit of help if they've screwed up the URL or left a piece of it out or, mm -hmm. you, you know, yes. yes, so that kind of thing. When but. I ask students to do their group presentation using VoiceThread, I always say make sure when you share your link, the form 
format will be US side that voice thread that you use slash share slash a hashtag, I think a, a seven digit number. Mm -hmm. But if you start to have like a, all kinds of weird long link, then that is the wrong link because they got it from the browser. Mm -hmm. And and since faculty yeah. now is more knowledgeable about this, but if you're gonna ask students to do it, they mm -hmm. might thought the browser link is the one that they ended up nobody can see. Could you send all this to me or in any way? Sure, sure, so yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Just all the instructions. I think we have the boyfriend um, uh, tutorial. We're going to send it to all faculty in this program. It may be different right in front of you, mm -hmm. but for me, it's extremely difficult to read the black and the orange. Mm -hmm. And believe mm -hmm. me, I'm a Tiger fan, yeah. so I, I like the black and the orange. <laughs> yeah. But unless I'm right there at it, I may not be able to, you know, mm -hmm. part of it could be what's being displayed up there, but it may be difficult mm -hmm. for I was, some people to read. I was wondering if you could um, maybe try out using the buttons and see if maybe the button option would make the black on orange a little more visible. Hmm. I don't know. I well, could give it black, a try. Black on orange is it's a, a low contrast because the orange actually has a, a, a deep value mm -hmm. between it and so yeah if that is that like a a, a blackboard default no it's not and okay. i've tried different things to try to to make the contrast better and if we use the usa eye color colors it's dismal yeah. so i mean it's either it, that or make it pale white i mean there's not a whole the, lot of the, the orange background would work with a light font with white, white text, yeah, white text yeah. on it. That that would give you plenty better of contrast. That, that would work. Okay. And another suggestion I have is, if you want to use buttons, you may not be able to put all that text. In yeah, you'd have to shorten your yeah. your mm -hmm. captions there significantly. If you want this long, late on, text only text, for the first one. I think you should use this instead of the button. But changing the text color would help tremendously. Yes. Yeah, Maybe but would like it change the gathering? rest of the, yeah. like, start here on the top? Would it change that text? I don't know. Yeah. No? I don't think okay. so. Yeah. We can play with it and see if we have options. Yeah, but it changes the text, mm -hmm. no? One suggestion well, I may have, Michael, and mm -hmm. it's when you see star here and you see all that stuff listed, I might feel overwhelmed as a new student. I think there's too much in that star here button. <laughs> and you might put it all there, just put star here. It just seems a little overwhelming to me that you see all mm -hmm. I have over you, the syllabus, the calendar, the hamburger composite. So you got all that there and they're thinking, we're just starting and I've got all this. And it's it's perfectly fine what you put there. It just might be a little overwhelming to the first time they see you. That's kind of that's why I use the buttons because it forces mm -hmm. me to be more yeah. concise than my Well I put the syllabus and calendar in a different um, button or whatever you want to put it, just because they're probably not going to use it again. They open it once they're done. What's that? The syllabus and the calendar. I put that under one, mm. um, one okay. block. And they, you know, they need the handbook and the competencies. It's just that, it just, because one of the things from QM was to start them out not feeling overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And when you see that. You the know, other thing I did. was, and I've done this in other courses too, hang on a second, announcements. I just thought a quick and dirty announcement, and then, in other words, basically, this is just something they could print off for navigation, right. and if they go under each of those sections, this is exactly what's in there. Theoretically, I could take the extra information off that menu and trim it to start here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could, because I've covered it over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you can make that your entry page then. And then you can even yeah. put a recording bundled with this announcement, with a link. <clears throat> so it will, if they want to watch your video, you can. If they want to read, they can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought. Great exchange. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much for all the sharing. And all right. Let me close this out. Okay.